Hello and welcome to the introduction for Falafel Tornado. My name is Lino Tadros and you can actually go to the falafel.com website to take a look at the Falafel Tornado product or you can also go to the NuGet Gallery to find out how you can download your copy of Falafel Tornado today. I opened actually Visual Studio and I just created a brand new website completely empty inside Finity and I'd like to show you from scratch in here how you can download and install Falafel Tornado to get it to work really easily inside of any website made for Sitefinity. So in Visual Studio I'll go to Tools and we'll go to Library Package Manager and we'll say Manage NuGet Packages for Solution. You will notice in here I can look for the word Falafel for instance on the NuGet and there will be a lot of them in here. I'm gonna go for the one that's called Falafel Sitefinity Tornado. If you install this Notice it has some dependency. All the stuff will be resolved for you automatically. We will add it to our project called Sifinity Web App that's installed right now. We'll say OK. It's finding out all the different dependency. There they are. I will accept that. And now it's installing each and every single one of them in my Sifinity Web application. And now we're done. We say close. What you ended up with, there is an API folder that got added that contains all our API calls for all these different things for events and forms and so on. We also have under scripts in here, we have the project called Falafel JS, and it contains some data, some CSSs. It will bring in a lot of our infrastructure and also require JS in case you want to use it and so on. So what would it take for actually for us to, to, uh, to be able to, uh, to do something with Falafel Tornado? Well, the Falafel Tornado is mainly a widget builder. It will allow you to create widget as blocks, like everything else as far as content in Sitefinity itself. Instead of having to create ASCX controls inside of Sitefinity, inside of Visual Studio for Sitefinity, you can actually do everything right now from inside of Sitefinity running instance itself. So the readme that will show up automatically in Visual Studio will give you some examples on how to actually start working with that. So we will come back to this readme to copy and paste some samples so you can get your hands dirty with, with Tornado a little bit. So let's go ahead and run this in your browsers. I'm going to run it in, in Chrome right now. And as soon as this website actually starts in here, we will be able to go ahead and include a new module builder right away. And here is the home page. You just have an image for the Falafel Tornado. Let's go ahead and, and uh, log in to the back end. We'll go to Sitefinity. I'm going to log in as admin. And the first thing we'll need to do is to add the widget block module that was created and was downloaded automatically for you when you got the whole package from the NuGet. So we're going to administration. We'll go down to module builder. And here I'm going to import a zip file that got downloaded during the NuGet uh, creation or the addition to the Sitefinity project. We're going to go ahead and select a zip file. We are going to go to the C drive where the website got created. Let's say Program Files, Telerik. We'll go to Sitefinity 5.4, Projects, and there is my Tornado project. Under the app underscore data, we went under Sitefinity, the temp directory, and this is where we installed our zip file called widgetblocks.zip. This is the file that needs to be imported. So we'll open that, we'll say upload, and it will take a second, and it will be created and ready for you in the module builder in here. Let's go ahead and activate this widget block. We'll say go ahead and activate that, and it will take a few seconds, and your widget will be ready to go. And there you go. Our module is installed and it's also active and widget blocks is now ready on this specific web application. All right. So now when I go to content in here, you'll notice there is a widget blocks that actually got added at the end of the uh, of the content items in here. So let's click on the widget blocks and start creating our first widget block for the new website. We're going to create our first widget block. Let's click on that. And this is the screen that you will be faced with. And this makes it so much easier to create 
widgets on the fly inside of Sitefinity instead of having to create ASCX controls with C-sharp code and so on and so forth inside of Visual Studio. You can do all that stuff right now inside of Sitefinity. So we'll come in here, for instance, we'll say test, for instance, and I'm going to give it a description. This is my first tornado. And you can put some HTML here if you'd like, but again, if you remember, in the README, we're giving you some samples. So I'm going to take this line of script in here. So we'll say Control C this. And in here, instead of putting in the HTML, and put it in the script. So I'm going to paste this line. And that line actually is using jQuery to go to the body and prepend the word added by Falafel Tornado as an H1 element for the HTML. Okay? But notice you can also put HTML in here. You can put an HTML code, put whatever divs and spans and whatever you'd like. You can run some scripts automatically in here using jQuery or even require JS if you'd like. You can decide where that code will go before the closing of the body tag or where the widget is dropped or in the header tag if you want. You can include some script files if you'd like in here. You can include jQuery, which in this case will be necessary because we're using jQuery. I'm not using require JS, so I don't need to bring it in. I can actually add some, C, uh, some styles in here in CSS, or I can point to an outside CSS file if I want to. Also, I can have a template for my HTML section. I can even put some uh, footer for my HTML that will go at the bottom. And one of the nicest things is that you can also add some HTML header tag. That means every time this widget will show up on a page, it will add whatever you're going to put in here in the meta section inside of the header section of your HTML as well. In the user section, it will tell you all the different pages on the site that are using this widget, so you can actually be aware of that. So right now, I'm going to go ahead and publish this. I only added one line for the script to make this work. So my first widget uh, block is called test, and it's now ready to go. There we go. We have our first widget block. It's called test. How do I get to use this um, this test widget in my system. I can go to a page, for instance, in here. Let's go ahead and open up the home page, for instance. There is the home page. And you will notice automatically the, the module that we installed added a new widget into your content area. Right here at the bottom, it's called widget block. So if I drag this widget block, let's put it, for instance, right in here. And it will say, please select a widget. So you can have multiple, hundreds maybe, of widgets that you will create using our widget block for Tornado, and in here you'll be able to come in and choose from the entire database all uh, the one of the uh, of the many different widgets that you have created. And there is my test in here. We'll say done, and we'll say save. Now the only thing left is for me to publish this page, and that's the only thing you have to do. Let's go ahead and view this home page now in the browser. We we'll click on view. And you'll notice all the way at the top in here, prepended to the body, says added by Falafel Tornado. If I push F12 to go and debug this, I can actually go all the way to the top in here, find out where that is. And there it is. It's an H1 added by Falafel Tornado right in the front of the body because it was prepended using my jQuery. So that worked right away. But you're probably saying this is too easy. Well, that is true. You can actually make complicated things if you'd like as well. What if I would like to create a widget for doing a rotator based on an album uh, inside of Sitefinity Library, for instance? That's not difficult to do in Sitefinity Tornado at all at this point. So let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to go back to my pages. And I'm going to go to Content. And we'll say we create another widget block. And we'll create a new widget block. This time we'll call this one, let's say, image carousel. And we'll give it a description, my image carousel. And now I need to put some HTML. Again, we're giving you that in the README as a sample for you to be able to, to play with that kind of stuff in the beginning. So we can um, copy and paste this div on, in here, for instance. Let's copy this. And I'm going to put it in the HTML section of my WYSIWYG Red Editor. And there it is. I have a div that has a my carousel. You can do whatever you want in here. And again, most of that code will be coming from third parties that you'd like to create a widget for on the fly. And Tornado will allow you to do that. Let's go back and get some script as well. This one is using required JS, which is great, so that you can make sure that you load the JavaScript only once. And it has a lot more features. You can definitely read up on the required JS, which the Falafel JS that is included 
instead of this package brings automatically if you'd like to use it. So I'm going to go in here. We'll find out where the scripts are. I'm going to paste this in here. And this actually requires JS is using jQuery and the Kendo web API and the bootstrap from Twitter, all that stuff. And it's using the API that got introduced um, by installing the NuGet by getting image by album. So get the images by album in here. And right now we're hard coding it to something called home slider. And that will be the name of the library. Of course, this is just a sample, so you can call it whatever you want. So in my case in here, for instance, I'm going to call it Lino. So I have to remember to create my album with, um, with the name Lino so that it will find this album in my library. So we can call it Lino in here. Now let's go ahead and keep going. I'm going to use jQuery. I'm going to use Required.js. I'm also going to use the bootstrap um, minification of the CSS so that I can make it look good, for instance. I don't have to re-engineer all the stuff. So we'll go back in here. In the script files, we'll bring in the CSS file for bootstrap. Also comes as part of the Falafel.js automatically. I'm going to include jQuery. I'm going to include Required.js. Now I'm... Uh, oops. No, sorry. That part is in the styles. There you go. Not in the script. <laughs> Alrighty. And now we need to, to make it look better. So I'm going to create a template for the HTML section itself that is being uh, import, imported all the way in the beginning. So I have here a section for your template as well. There it is. We'll bring this in. And that will actually style the way the, uh, the entire section for the HTML will look like. Alrighty, and then uh, finally, I can actually go ahead and create this widget block. I don't need anything else in here. So we'll go back down in here. Notice how it, now it knows that the home page is being used by the specific one in here. The widget template is being used there. So I'm going to say publish. And now I have two different widget templates, one for the image carousel and one for test. All right, let's go ahead and create a library really quickly. We'll say images. In there, I'm going to go ahead and create um, create a new image library. Remember, we told it it's going to be called Lino, so we need to be careful with that. It has to be the same name, of course. And I'm going to go ahead and and, uh, and upload maybe four or five images here really quickly as a sample. We'll say select images. We'll go to pictures, and I know that I have one, two, three, four, five. We'll take these five images in here, for instance, and we'll say upload in there. There we go. We have our five images uploaded. We can view the images, and we should be good to go. They're not all the same. Actually, there is subtle differences between each and every single one of them. Now let's go back to our page and start to use the new widget template that we just created. I'm going to go to the home page again. And this time, instead of showing the test, I'm going to change that. We'll say edit this widget block. And this time I can see the names of all the widget blocks in the database. And that is my image carousel. And let's see if this will work. We'll say done. Save that. And automatically we'll say publish. And now let's go ahead and view this page. And there it is. There is my widget working. Notice it all that's coming from the template, the uh, next and previous. So I can actually wait for a few seconds and it will automatically move me to the next, uh, to the next slide right away. It, you can actually specify that. In your, um, in your HTML and the script that we've written in the widget block, or you can actually click on that and move it yourself if you'd like. Or it's based on a timer, of course, built into the rotator itself. It will do all that stuff. Again, this is loading from the library. We didn't have to create an ASCX control. We didn't have to do anything of that, uh, of that kind. All the stuff is built inside of Sitefinity. I don't have to recompile. I don't have to uh, deploy this as files or uh, always making change that I have to recompile my ASCX control or anything like that. Now it's all written smoothly from inside of Sitefinity without ever needing to leave Sitefinity itself. I hope you enjoyed this and I hope you can create hundreds if not thousands of different widgets using Tornado and have fun. Thank you.